Hi, this is Craig Stocks, and this is my photo critique of the day. Today's image is submitted by Gary Tipsworth. So, Gary, thank you so much for providing this image for us to look at. Uh, it's obviously a, a wonderful black and white landscape image. Uh, generally, I don't know the backstory on any of the images that I see, so I don't know if this is a, uh, a flooded river or a lake, but uh, this scene obviously has a lot of downed trees. Uh, with the trees leading out into the water and then some wonderful clouds and sunlight going on and even some uh, crepuscular rays, rays of the sunlight shining down. Uh, I think he made a good decision to go with a black and white treatment on this. Uh, the rule of thumb I tend to use is if the color isn't adding to an image or especially if it's just not pleasant color, which can sometimes happen, uh, that's when I start to look at black and white as an option for the image. And in this case, I think black and white works really well because it maintains all of the nice, strong graphic shapes and contrast in the image without the distraction of color. And given the time of day and the location, there probably wasn't a lot of attractive color going on in the image anyway. So I think that was a good choice. Looking at the overall composition, one of the things I always look at is the horizon. And the horizon is nice and level here. So it lends a nice, calm, feel to the image. Uh, I really like the composition with the trees, the way they're leading into the image, and in fact if you look at the different trees, uh, there's almost a chevron effect where you have trees that are repeating the shape of leading into the image on the right side, and again on the left side we get these repeating leading lines that are leading us right into the image, and then we've got this dark area at the bottom with some, some grasses or uh, plants of some sort filling in this area but also pointing into the center of the image. And even looking at it from above, there's a fair amount of, of contrast and, and almost chaos in the clouds above. But again, we have these wonderful beams of light shining down into the image. So everything is kind of leading the eye right into the center of the image. But looking at the image overall, uh, as I look at this, if I put this against a white background, or if we look at the histogram over here, we can see that there's really not a lot of bright areas that even though, for instance, the clouds up here that are getting closer and closer to the sun probably appeared very bright to the eye, that they're still uh, kind of a, a mid-tone, maybe a three-quarter tone, but certainly not approaching white. So one thing that you might consider is, first of all, you might want to look at your monitor and make sure it's not too bright because having a monitor too bright can lead to images being too dark because it, it lets you think they're brighter than you actually have them set. And the other thing is to carefully watch the histogram to see where the, the tones are falling. And in Lightroom you can move your cursor over the image and you'll get a readout just below the histogram that shows you the brightness of the, Im the pixels that are right below the cursor. So we can see for instance most of these are in the 50 to 70 percent range. Uh, so the first thing I might do is just brighten the image overall and bring these bright areas closer to a white. And if that starts to get too bright and we start to lose too much detail up here, then you might want to pull back the highlights a little bit and that'll create some contrast in the bright areas by keeping the, the almost bright areas from getting too bright but then let the areas that are closer to white get brighter. We could even maybe pull up the whites just a little bit and what that's doing overall is giving us more contrast in these bright areas and I think it's bringing out more of the, the texture and structure in the clouds. Um, if we look at it against a black background, it doesn't look too bright. And if we look at it against a medium gray background, which I'm just right clicking in this area outside the image, medium gray which is the default, it still looks good and against a white background now it, it looks less, <clears throat> I would call it less muddy if we look at the before and after, uh, the whites could maybe even go up a little bit more. Uh, keep these, let bright areas be bright and let dark areas be dark. Uh, as I look at cropping and thinking about the image overall, some of the brightest areas now become the very top of the image. And generally we don't want the brightest area of the image to be along the edge. We want it to be more in the center. Uh, dial this back down a little bit. So we might deal with that uh, by adding a local adjustment. Uh, you could just put a graduated filter here 
and primarily what I want to do is darken the whites and just keep that top area from being quite so bright relative to the rest of the sky. And it's still a bright area, but now it's just a little bit less bright than the central area, so it helps keep the, the viewer's eye a little bit more centered. Uh, the other thing we might want to do is, if we look at the structure here and the corpuscular rays and so forth, uh, if we throw a clarity adjustment in here, I can do that with a radial adjustment and then bring up the clarity. What that clarity does is really bring out the texture in the clouds. It shows the corpuscular rays a little bit more clearly and gives us more definition in the clouds. Overall, I think this is a, a good framing. There's a lot of interest in the foreground, a lot of interest in the sky. That There's a, a few contrasty details right along the edge with some, some vertical stumps or branches on the trees on the left side and again on the right side. But you could experiment with cropping those out or cropping a little looser, but because there's so much going on in this image, I don't feel like it's really much of a, a concern or an issue. It would be nice, a couple, you know, perfect world, you know, when you were taking this image, uh, it would have been interesting to experiment with a couple different angles. Uh, for instance, if you chose a lower camera angle, that would foreshorten some of the detail and lower the horizon and let you include even more of the clouds and the structure in the sky. That might have been an interesting alternative. Uh, if you don't have a wider angle lens, uh, one thing you can do also is turn the camera vertical and shoot uh, typically like three or four vertical frames as a panorama and that effectively gives you a much wider angle lens. Uh, for instance, if you have a, a 24 millimeter lens, by turning it vertical and using a panorama that gives you the equivalent of about a 16 millimeter lens's angle of view. So a much wider angle of view with the lens you already have on your camera and that again would have let you include more sky and possibly keep the horizon a little bit lower so it's not quite so close to the center and more sky and still have the, the interest in the foreground. But even without all those changes, I think this is still a wonderful image. They say I like the composition, I like the way the, the trees and the sky and the, everything leads us into the center of the image and I think that overall makes it a very successful black and white image. So Gary, thanks again for sharing this image with us and I look forward to seeing more images from the rest of you. Thanks and have a great day.